since we're talking geology, we've got the map out, right? Here, I've done a lot of work with groundwater contamination, by the way. Tremendous amount of work. In the 90s, I mapped out groundwater contamination, plumes and stuff, right? So we would go to areas, right, and have geophysical equipment out there, a lot of electromagnetics, because contaminants have ions, free-floating ions, and they have a charge. So when you use electromagnetic methods, EM methods, right, what that does, you have a transmitter and a receiver, and the pulse, the transmitter, sends a signal into the ground, and if there are ions, free-floating ions in the ground, as we talked about with the Earth's magnetic field, if you have ions, right, then if you send a magnetic field through it, right, electromagnetic field through it, it will respond right so what you do you zero the instruments when there is nothing right you, you get it back from the factory or you buy brand new and you have to go somewhere zero right and then you go through and you map out contaminants plumes right so that's the way you can find contamination in the ground if it's coming from one source right but if all the whole area is contaminated it's very hard to get a background uh, reading to zero the instrument, right? That's one thing that you, you have to keep in mind. The other thing you have to keep in mind is the earth, the earth, let's do green. The earth, actually, let's do blue. No, 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 let's do green. So check this out. So we're, here's the earth. Are we, are we doing a little de diversion again? We need something bigger. Let's do this. Okay. Apologies if I'm not reading the chat. Just, might as well talk about this, right? So here's the surface of the Earth, right? That's the surface of the Earth. This is us, right? Here's the explosion, right? And this thing goes up to the stratosphere. It spreads over hundreds of kilometers, right? So on the Earth here, you have water. Water. Let's assume this is a water body, river lake or something right we'll put little things on it so there's water there right liam thank you very much for the follow you got cattle right you got little cows little livestock eating grass right eating grass okay what else do we have here we got fruit trees right we got fruit trees we got crops Right, we got crops. From what I understand, in Ohio and the surrounding region, there's lots of corn and soya being grown. Right, and corn and soya are used in everything. Right, all of this plume covering, 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 and huge chunks of Canada. So we're talking. This is. This might as well do this. Right. Let's do, let's bring out one of these guys. Map it out. Let's map out this Ohio thing. Yeah. Because this is war on humanity, right? This is war on humanity, All right? Put some curve on that drawing. <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. So here's Ohio, right? Here's Ohio. We're this. This is the contamination, right? This is a contamination, right? Do I have that right approximately? Approximately? Right? Because parts of it went up to Montreal and stuff, right? The plume. And this is gonna, this is gonna disperse, right? It's gonna disperse. It's not just this. This is the main zone, right? What are stickers in Germany? Uh, Germany, Germany should have its own little sticker saying "Complete the industrialization and collapse of Germany." That's what we're witnessing right now, right? Almost on the same level as Ukraine, right? But this is the contamination main, and this is gonna disperse. So there's gonna be contaminations all over the place here, right? So, and homes, don't forget homes, people's homes. We got homes here, man. We got homes, people's homes, right? Homes, schools, right? 
homes and schools, right? right? All of this is contaminated on the surface. All of it. All of it. The air you breathe is contaminated. The air you breathe is contaminated. Right? All of it. This is from someone I did 10 years of environmental work, right? 10 years of environmental work. Okay. All of this is contaminated. I would not touch, drink any of the surface water. I would not eat any of the surface fruit, vegetables. I will keep my pets indoors. Okay. Indoors. Okay. Now, a lot of the water uh, treatment plants and stuff like this, from what I understand, there's a town, I forget which town it was, that they actually stopped allowing water from whatever river is here to go into the water filtration system. So they stopped the flow there. That's something that Michigan didn't do with Flint, right? With Flint, Michigan, they continued to use this toxic stream water and that corroded all the pipelines and stuff like this, right? So one town or one area has already stopped the flow of the river water going into their treatment facility, right? Because might as well be cautious, no shit, right? So everything on the surface is contaminated. Here's the thing. There are places in this area that get their water from aquifers. I forget how to spell aquifers. Aquifers. So aquifers are basically underground streams, right? And there's a flow to them. Flow to them, right? There's a flow. So what's going on here is all of the surface is contaminated, but a lot of aquifers, depending, and keep this in mind, right? Depending on what type of stratigraphy, like layers of uh, soils and rocks and whatever you have here, like if this is, clay it acts as a boundary it's hard for the water that is now making its way into the ground so remember all the surface stuff is contaminated but so is the soil for topsoil topsoil you need topsoil topsoil is actually uh, the depletion of topsoil on earth is a major problem major problem major problem okay because once you don't have topsoil you can kiss goodbye your agriculture you can kiss goodbye your fruit trees you can kiss goodbye your livestock right because you need livestock if you're not feeding them inside industrial right you need them you need them to eat grass right now I, again apologies gang if i'm not reading the chat so the topsoil is contaminated and what happens as it continues to rain right if it's raining and it's going to rain the contamination slowly makes its way down into the ground right depending on what they hit they may not penetrate in certain areas however the aquifers get their water supply the water that's coming through here in different locations right so for example this aquifer is not necessarily let's say 100 meters below here or 50 meters below here constantly throughout the whole region sometimes the aquifers go up just like the stratigraphy right the layers of whatever you have goes up comes to the surface sometimes it comes to the surface it hits a lake right so the source for an aquifer might be a lake okay so if this is water let's assume this is a lake a deep lake this might be the source of an aquifer that is making its way down from there right or an aquifer that comes up and just touches it and a little bit of that just replenishes the aquifer and the layer keeps on going this way again right i'm i am 20xx thank you for the follow right so it goes like this so this aquifer may have its source somewhere down 
further downstream, right? So, uh, oh, good, very nice. So, people who are getting water here, right, might have access to an aquifer, which its source is over here, right? <sighs> Lucky for them, for now, right? People who get water here, maybe outside of the toxic zone, might get their aquifer replenishing from a lake here. Oh, shit, right? So what's happening right now? This is contaminant, but what's going on with the water system throughout this whole region, right? There could be major aquifers going in all directions from here. So this isn't just the contaminant zone. The contaminant zone is this, right? Whoa. Okay. Whoa. When we did geophysics, or when I did geophysics, some of the geophysics I did, I would map out contaminant zone off coming off landfills or brine pits or whatever, right? So if someone had a well going down here, right? Going down here, what we would do, we'd run surveys here. And if there was a landfill on this side, let's say, or a brine pit, right? And the farm owners and stuff, they, they could see that their water is contaminated. Once you use your water from a well, once the well water changes, you know what's going on. Something's happened, right? The aquifer feeding this thing, right? If that's your zone, that's where you're getting your water from. This is the flow. There's something going on. Something is leaching into the aquifer and contaminating your well water, right? So whenever we get situations like this, we'd be called out, we do geophysics, and sometimes you, you can map out a plume going towards the well water, right? So the plume movement, and by the way, based on stratigraphy, plume water flows downhill, right? So the water, if it's flowing in that direction, and it's not just, this is a side view, right? On a map view, if we do the map view here, let me give you the map view too. If you do the map view, let's assume this is the well, right? Right. This is where the dude was. Here's the landfill or brine pit. If you're mapping out contaminant and the farmer or who, the town or whatever, they're concerned about their well water being contaminated, we do mapping of the zone and you see this. And what you see here, this is contours of the uh, what do you call it? Uh, I forgot all the terminology for this stuff, electromagnetic stuff, right? Where you see this would be like a hot, very lots of contamination, lots of ions, and this is less because it's leaching out. All of a sudden you go, oh yeah, your well's inside the contaminant plume. Oops. Family drinks from that. Cattle drinks from that. This is used to water the fields. Oops. 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 Shit. Right? Now this might take a few years for all of it to leach out, continue, right? When you have a landfill like this or a brine pit like this, it's a constant feed. It's a constant feed of contamination going into the plume, right? An event like this is a one-time event, right? Hopefully, it's a one-time event. And once all that contamination has filtered through, then, you know, hopefully the system, the environmental system will clean itself out, right? Will clean itself out. However, during that period, in this period, who knows how long it's going to take for this contamination to work itself out through the system, right? That might take years, months, and how far down? Like, if people are being poisoned here, and if the contaminant is getting into the aquifer system, because aquifer system, sometimes the flow is fast, sometimes it's slow flow, right? How long is it going to take to hit North Bay, let's say? Right, if they're getting their water from the deep aquifer, large aquifer that's being fed from this location, right? It's a shit show. 
the government's lying to you the corporations are lying to you okay that's why that's why we need transparency and accountability of capitalist power which is something that uh, you know organizations like WikiLeaks and people like Julian Assange have been trying to bring uh, for us right reveal reveal the crimes committed by governments and corporations provide accountability and we or provide transparency and we have to provide the accountability right we have to provide the accountability okay that's my take on the Ohio uh, Palestine train disaster and it is a disaster and if you want to know an equivalent size disaster most likely look at the Bhopal look at the incident in India Bhopal when a chemical factory facility exploded and tens of thousands of people died in a short period of time and tens of thousands of people were contaminated and they were never able to as far as I know get compensation for what uh, the Bo Bhopal I think incident uh, did in India okay will people hear 